People who live near famous tourist destinations. What is something the average person should know? Don't taunt the moose. Don't feed the moose. Don't get near the moose. They look like doofy horses, but they're bad tempered, weighty, and strong. If you want to simulate the after effects of a moose attack, hoist a pallet of cinder blocks two stories up, then drop it on your chest. Just because it won't eat you afterwards, it doesn't mean it won't kill you. Glacier National Park here. Don't spray your kids with bear spray, ever. It's not going to prevent bears. It's high power pepper spray. I've actually been asked how much parents should spray on their kids. Dang people are stupid. I'm sorry. I find this absolutely hilarious. I can't stop laughing. I love it. Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Gap and Victoria's secret stores at the Mall of America are the exact same as the ones in your regular mall back home. Mall of America is insanely overwhelming. If you find yourself at Tunnel View in Yosemite, turn around 180 degrees, walk 100 yards into the tunnel and then turn right and take the hidden walking tunnel out to where they dumped all the debris from the digging. It is a fun quick side trip no one knows about. Spooky, especially if you have kids with you. I live in Amsterdam, just a few blocks from the Anne Frank house. If you see a red path while visiting our city, don't walk on it. That is a cycle path, and you will get hit. Similarly, the biggest thing people don't realize is instinctively you tend to only look to cross a street when you hear a sound. Bikes don't make a sound. So when visiting Amsterdam you should always look both ways before stepping into the street. From my own experience visiting Amsterdam, if you want to visit the Anne Frank house and or the Van Gogh museum, you should definitely buy your tickets online in advance. That way you can beat the queues and directly get in at the designated time slot. Paris and its sights. If groups of teenage girls come up to you asking you to look at their petition fly or whatever, keep walking and hold your bag close. The Mona Lisa, as famous as it is, is far from the most interesting thing in the Louvre. Be sure to see some of the lesser known sections like the phenomenal collection of Middle Eastern artifacts. The Arc de Triomphe is a better view than the Eiffel Tower. In Brussels, there is a famous statue called Mannequin Pies. It's just a 30 centimeter high statue of a kid taking a pies, nothing more. Don't visit it and act all disappointed because it's so tiny. It was never advertised as something more than what it is. There's a chocolate version in a shop window right next to it. The chocolate version is bigger. The Mall of America is still just a mall. Crap, I was going to write the same thing. I'll have to go with. The Mall of America is heated solely from body heat and sunlight from the skylights. Hershey PA. One chocolate world is free but everything else costs a fortune. 2. Go to the local grocery store giant and purchase tickets for Hershey Park there. They usually have discounted tickets. Sah. Much less free chocolate than expected. Plus side. Seeing Amish and Mennonites riding roller coasters. Just a bit of a cool culture shock. We went there because in 4th grade my brother did his state project on Pennsylvania and developed an obsession for Hershey Park because it sounded kind of like going to the Wonka factory. We had a lot of fun, despite there not being chocolate fountains. In Alaska people worry about the bears. Yes, they will eat you but it's easy to avoid. Keep an eye out for the moose, the mud flats, abrupt unsecured edges to roads, cliffs, that hot dog stand that somehow avoids being closed and a number of other things that will kill and maim you that you think are safe. Enjoy your visit. It's off to Australia next year. What could go wrong there? On the walk of fame in Hollywood, do not sit on the ground. Don't touch the stars when you take pictures with them. Just no contact, please. That ground is vile. Human fesses. Pee. Vomit. Everything. I see it every day as it's happening and cry inside when I see a Taurus face down next to a star. Same goes for the handprints in front of the Chinese theater. Also, don't expect to see celebrities in Hollywood. Go to the west side or Beverly Hills and find a Bristol Farms or a Whole Foods. You'll have much more luck there. Plymouth Rock is stupid. It's a rock in a pit, which is flooded half the time. Don't waste your money. Can confirm. Plymouth Rock is junk. Plymouth Plantation on the other hand, is hours and hours of fun. I live 20 minutes from Banff National Park. Don't feed the animals. Don't take selfies with the bears. Don't pet the elk. 
Moraine Lake is better than Lake Louise. For either of those go at sunrise so you have the place nearly all to yourself. If you go to Lake Louise during the day and are stuck in the clusterfuck that is parking just park into Chateau's Parkade for I believe $8 and save yourself the time and rage. Look up hikes on trailpeak.com to get through the Banff town sites quicker walk through the alleys. Park in the Parkade on Bear Street, it's free, for now, and up to 8 or 12 hours. P.S. Want to avoid the crowds? Stay in Canmore, still busy but not quite to the Banff degree, and venture into Kananaskis. Yup. If you cross the border into North Dakota, turn around. How to be a proper New Yorker when buying food from street vendors that don't have posted prices in tourist trap areas. Step 1. Order a hot dog. Step 2. As vendor finishes making hot dog, ask how much it costs. Step 3. After learning it's $7, tell him to you refuse to be ripped off, then proceed to walk away. Step 4. Get called a mother in a thick foreign accent. Step 5. Respond by calling him a cocksuckin scumbag, then offer to pay correct pricing of no more than $2. Step 6. Parties mutually agree to settlement while muttering under breaths. Step 7. Enjoy said hot dog. Step 8. Optional bonus. Spend saved money on overpriced cocktails without complaint. I am telling myself to do that, but at the same time I know I am just going to get scared and pay whatever he says. Golden Gate Bridge. If you show up in the summer months expecting to get beautiful views of the bridge and warm California temperatures, chances are you'll get blown away, freeze your butt off and see nothing but fog. Went to SF in June, pack nothing but shorts and shirts, had to buy a jacket, returned to SF in late September, brought jackets and pants figuring fall would be colder than summer because that's the case where I live, wore nothing but shorts and a shirt. Barcelona is a beautiful city with amazing things to see, but, it is also a monster that can chew you up and spit you out. The tourist party attraction is high here as the parties go all day and night, alcohol is cheap and so are the drugs. This will make you a great victim for scams, thieves and prostitutes. I've seen people arrive on a Friday in the best mood and then leave on Monday morning with no money, no passport, no change of clothes, and a trip to hospital later. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Crap, I must have way overpaid for my shenanigans. New Orleans. If it's not Mardi Gras season, January through February or early March, depending on the year, Take off those mother freaking beads, you look ridiculous. Never pick beads up off the ground. If you're going to a beach, don't feed the dang seagulls. If, for some reason, you have to visit Bondi Beach in Sydney where freaking sunblock SPF 30 plus minimum, because it's Christmas, that's dead middle of our summer, and you're probably from either England or Germany, the hospital is sick of treating your burns, and you look weird when you're red. Yes, the sun is trying to kill you in under an hour. I live near Philadelphia. If you want a delicious cheesesteak and not just okay one, avoid tourist destinations like Pat or Gino's and go to places like John's or even local food trucks. When you run up the rocky steps and get a picture taken with your fists in the air, you should turn around and check out the world class art museum behind you. Bring a sweatshirt to San Francisco, or don't, and support one of our many vendors selling Alcatraz sweatshirts to tourists when they get here in July and it's 60F. The weather in SF is always one of two things, sunny with a need for a light jacket, or cloudy with a need for a light jacket. The best time to visit Walt Disney World is October. Fall break was a month ago, so no one's there, they're all back in school. There's a Halloween party in Magic Kingdom, a food wine event at Epcot with drinks and cuisine from all the countries plus others that's freaking awesome, and the weather isn't hellish, it's actually quite nice. Yes, definitely, or, if you must, winter after New Year's, just don't go in summer. Summer is hellish in Florida, plus it rains every day, and if there's lightning, 80% of the time, they shut down a bunch of rides. Just because an animal doesn't have sharp teeth or claws doesn't mean it can't frick you up. I'm looking at you, Yellowstone tourists. Hollywood is not a beautiful shiny place where all your dreams come true. Everybody's a star, and celebrities just pee about all willy-nilly. It's hot, 
Crowded, dirty, smoggy, and crawling with homeless people, you've been warned. You described my experience perfectly. The traffic there is horrendous and, I don't know how to explain it, but there's a constant feeling of tension in the air. Stressed me out. I am a part of the King's Guard in Norway, and the castle is a huge tourist attraction. We are allowed to smile, talk and pose for photos. If you come at 13.30 you will see the change of guards, which is the biggest attraction of the castle. After that, every 2 hours there will be a smaller change of guards. The US. Capitol building is not the White House. And Tower Bridge is not London Bridge. The Space Needle is cool but it's really overpriced. Sure, the rotating restaurant is kind of fun, but be prepared to really shell out the dough to eat there. The Space Needle is a lot more impressive from a little bit of a distance than it is when you're standing right underneath it imo. If you want a nice view, try going across the lake, take a ferry, or go up the Smith Tower instead. To add to this, Pike Place Market actually is pretty cool, and worth a look to go there, and check out all the breweries in the area. Times Square is fun for about 5 minutes. Locals avoid it like the plague. There is no good food there. Try 9th Ave at least. And you'll get mobbed by adults who barely speak English in Elmo and Marvel costumes who can be a bit aggressive about tips. Avoid PD cabs, big ripoffs. Generally anyone coming up to you on the street is doing so for a reason they may or may not have a legitimate product, but it will never be anything worth purchasing. Walk as far right as you can except to pass. If you need to look at your phone or consult your pals, step out of the way. Don't walk more than two, maybe three, across in a high volume area. Don't be afraid to ask directions as opposed to wandering around with your map flapping in the wind. We're not rude, but we usually have somewhere to be, like work, or drinking. Tourists should know that New Yorkers enjoy giving directions. It validates their sense of being a New Yorker. I live in Las Vegas and work in the timeshare industry. Do not go on a timeshare presentation. We have 64 booths that are disguised as show ticket vendors. I work at these booths and convince people to go on a timeshare presentation to save a couple hundred bucks on show tickets. We make it almost impossible to say no because the deal is so great. We promise everyone the tour is only 2 hours and there's no obligation to buy anything. What ends up happening on the presentation is anything but that. Most of the time the presentation could be 5 hours or longer. Sometimes can take up most of the day if the sales rep feels he has even the slightest chance to sell you. The sales reps are evil and turn couples against each other. They won't let you get your tickets or leave until they have your credit card. I've ruined countless vacations. I've had numerous people come back and try to fight me. Not only that, but the seats for the show are nosebleeds and the timeshares are overpriced. They sell 3 week packages for $18,000 but you can buy the same thing on eBay for less than a grand. Timeshare is a great way to vacation but it's too bad the industry to sell them is terrible. I'm trying to get another job because sometimes I can't sleep at night knowing what I put people through. Pay full price for show tickets and do not go on a timeshare presentation. If you're walking around Hollywood Boulevard, this applies to most crowded places really. Keep a close eye on your belongings. Keep your wallet in a front pocket. Try not to bring too much in general, and always do a little pat around your pockets occasionally for phone, wallet, etc. To make sure everything's where it needs to be. Pickpocketing is very real. Also if anyone on Venice Beach tries to get you to listen to their mixtape, just walk away. They'll shame you for not giving them some money to help it get produced. They are pretty much charismatic panhandlers. I've lived in La most of my life and I've only been to Venice Beach maybe 4 times. My friend got her cartilage pierced by a lady with dirt caked under her fingernails and a homeless man came up to us and flashed his sunburned dong at us and stood there just waving it around for a while before proceeding to chase us. It's too crazy for me. No you cannot see Machu Picchu in a weekend. It's a 20 plus hour bus ride from Lima to Cusco, and at least 4 hours from Cusco to Aquas Calientes. This means that if you want to do a day trip from Cusco, you need to leave your hotel about 4 a.m. Cusco is 3,500 meters above sea level. You cannot walk up a flight of stairs without being massively out of breath on your first day in the city. Don't even think about trying to walk the Inca Trail the day after you arrive. You'll need at least 3 days, 
and a lot of coca tea to deal with the altitude. Talking of which, permits to walk the trail pretty much are full about 6 months in advance. If you want to do it, you need to plan it far in advance. Plan to spend a week in Cusco. There's enough stuff to do in the city and in the surrounding areas that you'll be busy every day. And the restaurants are amazing. Eat the alpaca rather than the kiwi. If you come to Orlando, you can't get discounted tickets to Disney Universal. Anyone offering you discounted tickets is scamming you. There's a good chance they won't even work at all and you'll be escorted off the property. Don't go the Empire State Building. Instead, go to 30 Rock. The view is better, it's cheaper, it's bigger, and the wait times are 5 minutes instead of 5 hours. More importantly, you can't see the Empire State Building from the top of the Empire State Building. The NY skyline just looks off. If you want to see the skyline you came to see, go to 30 Rock. As someone who lives in Lancaster, PA, people come here to see the Amish all the time. You should know, there's really nothing to see, like absolutely nothing. Shady Maple Stonehenge If you come on a solstice night, you can go right up to, heck even stand on, the stones. As long as you don't mind the overpowering smell of weed that is, pee. Wow I did not know you were ever allowed to go near the stones. I always warn people that it is literally only a pile of stones with a constant traffic jam crawling past and don't recommend it. Living in Seattle Space Needle is cool to look at from the bottom, but a dang money trap if you go to the top. Views are okay, but seriously, go over to Columbia Tower and get superior views for a lot less. Plus, you get to see the Space Needle. There's also Smith Tower which, while smaller, is absolutely beautiful on the inside. Though I think it's closed for the rest of the year while they renovate it. Also, if you're driving, for the love of god there is no reason to try and drive down the brick road at Pike Place Market. It will not get you to your destination any faster, and you'll mostly be sitting there going no more than 2 miles per hour because the road is packed with tourists, or those of us who actually go there to get produce fish super cheap flowers. Also, the original Starbucks is not the one in Pike Place Market, it's across the street, and there are so many coffee shops that actually have good drinks. You can get Starbucks anywhere, so try out a local place. There's one right under the market in Post Alley. Ghost Alley Espresso has the best lattes in that area. Adding this one to for something somewhat touristy to do. Take the ferry. Bainbridge. West Seattle Water Taxi. Doesn't matter. Take one if you want really great views of the skyline. If you take the water taxi, get a taco and some shave ice from Marination Station that's right there. If you take the ferry to Bainbridge, either get right back on or walk around the main road until the next one comes. Gasworks Park is my favorite spot for the skyline though. Niagara Falls. As an American, I can confidently say skip the American side and go right to the Canadian side. Much cleaner, more to do and see. At the falls, made of the must boat ride is very cool, as is Cave of the Winds. The rest of the excursions, not so much. A side trip while you're there to Niagara on the lake is also worth doing for some good restaurants and smaller town vibe. Grand Cayman, East End and Rum Point aren't worth the trip unless you are visiting for a couple of days. And even then, meh. Cemetery Beach is 2 minutes drive north past the usually packed 7 mile beach. Go there instead. Please stop eating at the tourist traps, Guy Harvey's, Jimmy Buffet's, Hard Rock, your tour guide, driver, whatever is paid to give you recommendations to places. It's not an inside tip, he's following a script. The turtle farm releases loads of turtles back into the wild, far more than would make it naturally, and have brought several varieties back from the brink. Support them, it's an expensive, fun, and worth the trip. Heck is a gift shop with a backyard full of black pointy rocks. Almost all of the food, other than seafood and a couple of fruits veggies, are from elsewhere. Don't expect to eat local for cheap unless you buy it from someone selling it on the side of the street, and then your odds are only 50 stroke 50. If you are on a budget and want a super cheap meal with a great view, the burger kind. Seriously, downtown has a spectacular view. That being said, Please spend a couple more bucks and at least move up to somewhere like my bar. Expect almost everyone you meet to be expats. The locals usually stay away from tourism. This is a good thing. 
Stringray City is worth it, but find the cheapest trip you can. The experience is once you get off of the boat, not the ride out there. Unless you are into serious diving, skip the other two islands. The Bracken boobies are interesting, but not worth the expense. I live near the Bay of Fundy. If you're visiting Hopewell Rocks, walk down the beach a little bit. It doesn't take long to get away from the crowds and you get way nicer pictures. But for God's sake, remember to watch the tides. The water comes up really fast. But if you want to see redwoods or just nature and you are in San Francisco, do not, I repeat, do not go to the Muir Woods. The traffic and congestion going over the bridge to Marin County is horrible. The woods are packed with noisy people and there is no parking. Instead go hike amongst the trees at Henry Cowell State Park instead. It's in Santa Cruz and the drive is almost as lovely as the hike. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.